The views expressed in this program do not necessarily reflect those of this station. Viewer discretion is advised. Welcome to Insights into Northeast Michigan, a WBKB News public affairs program. Insights deals with the issues affecting those in the community, as well as Northeast Michigan and the state. And now, Insights into Northeast Michigan. Hello everyone and thank you for tuning in to Insights into Northeast Michigan. Today we'll be talking about three new ordinances that have recently been passed regarding dogs in the city limits. So first we have with us Mayor Matt Walagora. Thank you for joining us, Matt. Thank you. And uh, so if you could tell me first kind of your experience with the different city council meetings. I know you've uh, been in attendance to them for many, many years. Uh, sure, yep. Uh, this is my fourth year and uh, I have yet to miss a meeting. So um, I'm pretty much on board with uh, how this uh, how this whole process has developed and where we're at now. Right, and so obviously these uh, do dog ordinances have been very much in talks through the past few meetings. So tell me what you've witnessed with those. Well, uh, you know, we've gotten uh, some, uh, some feedback from the community uh, and obviously in the news with different, uh, with different incidents with bites and attacks from dogs. Uh, and so uh, the staff has been working on uh, several ordinances for for several months. It's a process that takes a little while because you want to make sure that they're um, not only realistic but enforceable. And so uh, two meetings ago, and I won't throw the dates out there because uh, about two meetings ago they brought a, basically a, a first draft uh, to us and they took a lot of input from, uh, from the council members and how we felt about them. Uh, went back and made a couple of adjustments and then uh, first reading and then last uh, just last Monday was our uh, second reading and uh, and they were passed unanimously. So tell me um, the three separate ordinances that have gone, that have been passed. Uh, in a nutshell, uh, without going into too much detail, I guess uh, the first one is uh, pretty much designed uh, to address vicious animals uh, and um, and what has to be done by the owner in the event that they want to keep them if they've been deemed vicious but not to a level where the court system has um, said that they have to be destroyed. So uh, if uh, that addresses all the different uh, uh, things that they have to do, there's an itemized list like signs in, in, at their home and uh, different cages and uh, muzzles and things of that nature. So that outlines that. It's a licensing pro pro uh, progress. Um, and then the, uh, the second one uh, was um, I got to remember now, but uh, the second one was um, the animals at large. The right? animals at large. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so that's as far as how keeping your animals on your property and uh, and what you have to do if you can't. Uh, so that one was one that started out uh, very stringent, and we relaxed that one significantly, just to make sure that everybody that had a dog that needed to run out in the morning for a couple minutes and come back in didn't have to fence in their entire property. Uh, so it pretty much just addresses uh, if, you're, if your animal stays on your property, then you're fine. Uh, but this is what happens in the event that it doesn't. Um, and uh, and if, you're, uh, if you have to keep your dog on a lead uh, in your, on your property, then uh, that lead has to be two foot from the property line, mm -hmm. uh, things like that. Uh, so, and then the third one is, uh, is basically just cleaning up a little language in an ordinance that uh, was kind of on the books but not really regulated or enforced for years, and that's the leash law. So if your pet's on a city property, it has to be on a leash um, of no significant length, but that leash has to be uh, in some control of you. So if people are coming around you, you need to bring it in uh, and have it up close. So, and that, um, it's important for people to understand that that means the city property are sidewalks, the streets, the cemeteries, uh, the beaches, the parks, um, and that's, uh, the cemeteries uh, have been a, an issue uh, ongoing for several years. So this kind of, uh, this structures that, to, that you can't just turn your dog loose in the cemetery. Uh, mm -hmm. so, um, so that addresses those. Right, and being the mayor and a resident here, tell me how you've seen this kind of uh, over the course of the past few years, this kind of issue come about? Yeah, there's, well, um, you know, it, it, there's always been dog attacks and dog bites, and the ones that I've normally heard of over the years are uh, are more pertain to just a uh, dog attack somebody in their home, and the child had to be sent to the ER or something like that. Now we're starting to see a lot more uh, issues out on the streets and out in public areas, and, uh, and there's a lot of people around, and like I said, the cemeteries, the parks, uh, so that's very uh, that was important to us, and it's part of our it's part of our duty to uh, to address that. Um, 
but at the same time have something that's enforceable and something that's realistic. Uh, so they may evolve even a little bit more over time as far as uh, loosening them up a little bit in certain parks or at certain times or something like that. I can't really speak too much of that, but, uh, but right now the leash law is very stringent and uh, we'll just kind of monitor it as we go. Right, and being at the meetings and seeing this over the years, what have you seen from residents and what kind of um, issues have you heard from them? Uh, or how did they feel about putting these into effect, really? Um, the most, uh, now granted, I normally get a lot more negative feedback than I do positive, and that's fine. Uh, um, and this one, uh, this, this particular, these ordinances and controlling the animals on the streets and in, other, and, and in, and in people's yards and things, this is really passionate to people. So um, it's, uh, for some, it's a long time coming. Uh, some, uh, for some would have liked to have seen it, you know, almost immediate, but it was a process. We wanted to make sure we get it right. Uh, so, uh, from my perspective, people should be pretty happy about it as long as the um, is there is room for uh, for the for the police department to be realistic about what people can and can't do with their animals uh, on city property and things like that. So I think it's uh, it should evolve into something decent. Absolutely. And when uh, should the public expect these to go into effect? Well, we passed them last week, and uh, it's uh, they're uh, they're they're. Uh, actually in effect 10 days after they're printed, uh, so um, publicly printed, so in the newspaper, so that should be early next week. So we expect that they'll be um, in full force on um, our enforcement on the 6th of August. Okay, and if you could briefly tell me, you know, what your stance is on it. You are a resident here. Um, uh, you sure. were saying you do have sure. a dog, so tell I do. me what you sure. think. Sure, and that was, uh, that's always a little bit of a struggle because you try to you try not to think too much about just your own particular dog. Um, I have one obviously that uh, she walks pretty good. I don't mind having her on a leash when I go for walks and things, but at the same time, I like to go to an open area and throw Frisbee or something like that. And she normally stays right with me. Um, but there are times when she'll dart off and, and, uh, and chase something, um, but not ever, nothing, you know, in an evil nature, she's just friendly like that. Um, but I can appreciate the fact that not only are people afraid of a dog running after them, whether it's mine that seems half friendly or if it's something that's stalking them, um, there needs to be some type of a control. So from my perspective, uh, I have no issue whatsoever with the leash law when you're walking or you're in, you know, on public property. Um, uh, with the exception of I would like to see um, some, type of, uh, some type of relaxed uh, area for people that don't have a big yard that uh, that want to take their dog out and play frisbee, and um, the city's always looking for somebody that's got a passion to champion uh, a uh, a dog park. Because right now we just plain don't have the staff that can provide the attention that that needs mm -hmm. um, right now. So if a group or an organization or just a resident wants to go out and and really uh, find a place either in the county, the township, or the city that can accommodate that, that would be fantastic. But uh, right. for right now. My primary focus was on the vicious animals. Hopefully this helps the police department and, uh, and the building and uh, ordinance departments as far as getting the vicious animals and the ones that really need to be um, uh, out of the public to, to mm -hmm. get, address that and get it taken care of. So. Right. Well, thank you so much for all the information. We really appreciate it. We appreciate you being here. Anytime. I appreciate it. Thanks. All right, great. And coming up next, we'll be speaking with Don Gilmet, who will walk us through the process of how these laws came into effect. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Insights, everyone. We're here talking about the three new ordinances that were passed for controlling dogs in the area. I'm here with Don Gilmet, who's going to tell us more about the process of putting them into effect. So thank you for joining us, Don. Oh, glad to be here. So tell me um, a little bit about how these discussions came into place and, and why. The way that the discussions came into place basically was a lot of communities throughout the state and throughout the country have, have absolute bans on certain breeds of dogs <clears throat> because of all the issues they've had with Rottweilers, pit bulls, that type of thing. So initially we had a quick discussion about that. There wasn't any interest in anybody, the administrators or the elected officials in banning specific breeds because we'd rather deal with the problem. So the first ordinance that was worked on was the uh, vicious animal ordinance. And so it, do it doesn't matter what breed of a dog you have. Any dog can be deemed to be vicious if it attacks another person. So some of the key points of the ordinance, in my opinion, are that it doesn't matter what type of a dog it is, big dog, little dog. Um, there's provisions in there, just if someone is attacked or uh, in, in fear of their life or fear of bodily harm, it, it matters whether or not they provoked the incident. So 
you know, unfortunate if a kid's poking at a Rottweiler through a fence and the dog jumps the fence and bites them, it's probably not going to be a vicious animal. But if you're just walking down the sidewalk and a dog comes after you, that would be totally different. Mm -hmm. um, so it, through the course of this, you know, it'll go into effect next month. And when we deal with the issues, if, if someone reports a, a vicious animal incident, it would be to the police department or through 911, depending on the hours. Um, it still has to be educated through the court system. So the police officer would gather the information that he could get. You know, they would go to the, it would be scheduled for a court hearing. They would go to court, uh, the person, the plaintiff or the defendant would have a chance to state their opinion of what happened. And then the judge would be the one that ultimately would make a decision as to whether or not that was a vicious animal. And if it was a vicious, deemed a vicious animal by the court, then we have a whole bunch of stuff in place that you have to do to, for the protection of the public. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's, it's, it's a little bit unfortunate that we don't have hundreds of dog attacks every year in the city of Alpena, but you always have to pass the ordinance that affects 100% mm. to get to the 1%. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that's what it is. It's less than 1% in this case. But again, nobody wants a child to be injured or an, or an adult or a senior citizen or anybody else. Nobody wants anybody to be harassed when they're enjoying a uh, walk around town or out in their neighborhood in the evening. So that's the crust of the biscuit on a vicious animal. Mm -hmm. uh, the other ordinance, one of them is a uh, leash law, for lack of a better term, is that we've always had a, we always had an ordinance in the city where if you were on a public park, your animal had to be on a six foot leash. It was not highly enforced, we didn't have a lot of incidents, but that was the only place where your dog had to be leashed up. Short of that, it was very vague that you, your dog just had to be under your control. And, Generally, most dogs are under your control right up until they do something you don't want right. them to do, and then it's too late to take it back. So now, uh, if you're walking your dog in the on the public space in an unfenced area, you're going to have a six. Uh, well, the, the dog will be on a leash under your control. It doesn't have to be six feet mm -hmm. long. It could be a retractable leash or something like that. On your own property, a dog will either be tethered when you're not around it, or you will have a fenced-in yard or maybe a, a dog kennel, something to, to prevent the animal from getting within two feet of the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. You know, I've received a lot of complaints from people that they're just riding their bikes down the sidewalk with their grandkids or walking a dog, and, you know, a, a dog's chained up to the front steps, mm -hmm. and the chain can get all the way to the street, right. and they come out. Whether they attack or bite or do anything, the chain gets in the way of people's bicycles, and it's, it, it can be a terrifying experience for someone. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So the three laws that um, that were passed, the ordinances, the vicious animals, the leash, and the animals at large. Right. And the, the, the other part of it that was passed was to make it where it didn't have to be a six-foot leash on the public uh, right. parks and stuff like that. So it, it still has to be a leash, but it can be long. Mm -hmm. And so tell me about the process through these meetings. This has been in talks for a few months now, right? Yes, yeah, it's been for a few months. Well, not that it was a few months that it took us to do decide and decipher all the mm -hmm. information we garnered, but because we got a whole lot of other things going on at the mm -hmm. same time. So it, it, like any ordinance, it takes a while to get it passed. We want to try to get it right when we do it the first time. Mm -hmm. So typically the, the attorney and some of us, we will look at other communities and see what kind of ordinances they have in place for that, pick out what we think is good, discard what we think is bad, and then we beat. Oh, we probably met four or five times on this one as a group, you know, the city manager, the mm -hmm. city attorney, Joel, uh, myself and hash it out and try to game it out and see how do we make this fit for our community. So we think that we came up with the best product mm -hmm. we could for our situation. And like you said, there was no specific catalyst for this. It was just kind of modeling off of other, other right. um, communities. And, and well, I guess when I, not a specific catalyst, but there was a, I believe it was a mail carrier was bit mm -hmm. a few months ago on the north side. So that was certainly was a, another right. catalyst. Um, there's been incidents, like I said, calls that we get, you know, hey, this dog cornered me in my yard, this dog attacked my dog, right. you know, all these things. We, we really just did not have a good mechanism to deal with it mm -hmm. as they happened, other than the animal county animal control office. Mm -hmm. So if you call and they're closed, you're done. I mean, there's nobody else to get. So by having the city having their own ordinance with the, our police officers involved is going to make it a lot, a lot more user friendly for our taxpayers. Right, and you said it was, you know, less than a 1% Correct. issue, but even so, in, in such a small town, close-knit community, why do you think it's important yeah. to have these laws in effect? Well, what, one of the reasons is because we don't want anybody to be injured. I mean, that's what government's all about, health, safety, and welfare of the community, and that's, that's what we try to do. Uh, even though it's only the 1%, 
some of that 1% of repeat offenders. You know, we can go over and say, hey, your dog can't be chained up or can get across the sidewalk. Two weeks later, two weeks later. And strangely enough, it's never the dog's fault. Mm -hmm. It's always the people in charge of the dog that are a little remiss in their duties, the responsible animal ownership. The other thing is too, just with dogs running at large, you know, dogs get hit by cars. Mm -hmm. You know, our DPW is real good about it. on Long Lake Avenue, if they see a dead cat or a dead dog in the road, they pick it up, they try to contact the owner, hey, you guys seen where this dog came from, and to return the animal back to the owner, you mm -hmm. know, so that they don't wonder what happened to it. Mm -hmm. But uh, like I said, it's, would we rather be doing other things with our time? Absolutely we have many other things to do but mm -hmm. this was very important it was something we wanted to get into the books sure is. and make people aware of it before right. it's enacted yeah. all right well thanks so much for all the information don we appreciate you being here and uh, answering all these questions yeah, for us day. all right and you can tune in after the break to see joel jett the chief of police here in alpena who's going to tell us more about the legislative enforcement of these laws when we return Welcome back to Insights, everyone, where this week we're talking about three new ordinances that were passed this past week about dogs in our area. I'm here with Joel Jett, the chief of police here in the city of Alpena. Welcome, Joel. Thank you. Thank you for being with us. Absolutely. Uh, so if you could first tell us, obviously, you guys are the ones out there that are enforcing these laws and um, kind of observing to see if they're mm -hmm. going on. So tell me your experience with it over the years. Well, uh a lot of people didn't realize that we, we actually had a animal control ordinance before. It was for dogs running at large. And um, what it meant is that you really had to have your animal, your dog, under, the, under your control if you're out and about in a public area. And so that's always been on the books. Uh, what we've done now is re-examine that ordinance and kind of tweaked it uh, based largely upon the input from the public um, uh, that uh, we now have uh, pretty much implemented a leash law uh, in the city. Right, and so tell me, I know now it's um, reasonable length, right? Uh, uh, that is correct. We were, we were initially looking at a six foot length for the leash, but mm -hmm. after further discussion on the topic, uh, as you know, the retractable leashes are right. very, very popular in the parks and so forth. And so we opted to go with that, that type of wording. Um, and basically is that even with a retractable leash, the owner or the person who's in control of the animal or uh, who has the animal is responsible for keeping them under reasonable control. And so tell me how you guys determine that. What, what is reasonable control when you're looking and seeing these uh, issues coming about? Well, well, before the leash law was in place, um, if an individual, individual was out with their dog in a park, playing frisbee, whatever, whatever um, if, the anim if the animal was able to be, say, called back, um, you know, listen to the commands of the owner, um, that was reasonable control. Uh, but what we ran into, let's say if an animal was to go running off chasing a frisbee and then saw somebody went up to say hello, uh, you know, the person who is being greeted by the animal, even though it may be friendly, they still may be intimidated by the, by the dog approaching. And that's where we kind of run into problems. And then we've also had some unfortunate incidents where there's been some aggressive uh, animals. And, um, but, and that's again what brought apart the, the leash law and some of the other wording as far as the confinement of animals uh, on premises and so forth. Absolutely. And so there has been a representative, uh, you I'm guessing, at these meetings? Uh, correct. Okay, so yeah. tell me what you've witnessed there and, and why you think it's important not only to have residents there, but kind of different representatives from each side of it to Well, these. the actual meetings were when we developed the, uh, or refined the ordinance, was typically myself, the city manager, and uh, Mr. Gilman. And between the three of us, we probably had the most contact with these issues. Um, and and the, the concerns are expressed from the, from the citizens, whether it be at a council meeting, um, or a lot of times we, we receive emails or telephone calls directly. And we, you know, we take that information and we, we bring it back. We say, this is what I'm hearing, this is what, I, or what I'm seeing on the, on the street, and can we do it better? And so that's what we do. Right, and is in terms of future and um, kind of seeing these laws, they have changed, you know, over the past few years. Even so, now in the future, in the next few years, do you see them staying this way or even being further amended? You know, um, all laws, whether it be an ordinance or on, on animal control, whatever it is, you know, those are those are usually very living, breathing, uh, evolving uh, processes, and and they should be, as far as I'm concerned. You should never really be satisfied. Uh, you should always be looking to see how can we do it better um, and it, do we need to tweak this or tweak that. And so I'm never opposed to laws changing. Uh, sometimes it's, it usually is for the better. And, um, and I'm sure these will be no different. 
So we have pride down the road. I, we, I wouldn't be surprised if next year or maybe even next month, uh, we might find something else that we, we didn't think about or that's come to our attention that we need to address. And well, that's what we'll do. Right. It is an ongoing issue. I mean, whether or not there are these laws put into effect. But um, like you said, it's it's hard to have one simple solution for all of these things. That, so. that is true. I mean, no matter what you're talking about, mm -hmm. there's you're never going you know, to cover all all the possibilities. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, and, and that's true with all laws. As far as I, I know, mm -hmm. there's always going to be something you didn't think about or, or something that's unique that comes up. And, and you just, you know, you have to be reasonable, you have to look at the intent um, and, and work with it with what you have at the time. Right. And explain to me what will be done if someone is um, breaking one of these new laws. Will there be warning or fines or well, how can you determine that? Um, you know, it's a case by case basis, mm -hmm. like, like everything else. And, and, you know, my officers are well trained. They're, they're a reasonable bunch of guys. And, um, you know, I, I think People sometimes have the opinion that we're always out looking to get about tickets and so forth, and that's simply not the case. Uh, we probably hand out more warnings than anything else and a variety of things. Um, you know, we live in a small community, and we are we are your police department, and so you know we try to educate the public. We try to, uh, um, you know, but we are charged with keeping the peace and, and maintaining order. Mm -hmm. And so, um, more than likely, if there's a first offense, if it's a minor thing. So, uh, if a dog's running, you know, playing frisbee, frisbee, not hurting anybody, we're probably going to tell the owner, "Hey, you need to get him on a leash." Um, that's the new ordinance. Mm -hmm. um, if we have a situation where somebody blatantly just doesn't care and like, "Well, I've always done it, so I'm going to continue to do it," well, that may be a different story then. Mm -hmm. So it all really depends on the situation and and and, and how the contact goes. And uh, but like I said, we're about education and getting usually compliance in, in that manner. Mm -hmm. What do you find is the most difficult part of enacting these um, this legislation with such recreation you know what I mean it's it's not a traffic violation or it's not something like that it's you know someone with their pet so true I understand what you're saying but at the same time it is it is truly a, a public safety issue mm -hmm. and and that's why they have our involvement uh, because there have been unfortunately incidents of, of people being either intimidated or actually uh, hurt mm -hmm. by an animal that has has gotten away and you know, we don't want that, or other animals. And so, um, you know, we don't want that either. Mm -hmm. And so, while we're not trying to constrict anybody's liberties and so forth, and I know that may be the, some, you know, times of the appearance, that is, that's not the intent. It's mm -hmm. to keep people safe and, and other animals safe. And really, uh, even the animal that is, uh, could be the offending animal to keep them out of harm's way. Mm -hmm. um, because you need to be a responsible pet owner. And that, that means a lot of different things. That means not only food and shelter and proper care, but it means if, if you let your, your dog, in, which is usually the case, run wild, and, and it gets out and it, and it gets involved in an unfortunate incident, there could be civil liability, there could be criminal uh, repercussions. Mm -hmm. um, and again, the animal could also you know, uh, be facing some severe consequences. Mm -hmm. And nobody wants that. Exactly. And so that's what we're just trying to tell people, do the right thing and, and everything will be good. Yes. All right. Great. Well, thank you so much for uh, all the information. We appreciate you being here. Oh, well, thank you. All right. And uh, tune in next week to Insights into Northeast Michigan to learn about more things going on in our area. Thanks for watching. Insights into Northeast Michigan is produced by WBKB News. If you have any comments, suggestions, or topics you would like to see on a future show, please email WBKB News. This has been a production of Thunder Bay Broadcasting Corporation. All rights reserved.